And a very good morning, Eric Maggotson here. This is your chapter nine managing project quality video. I apologize for my voice and my raspiness. It just is what it is today. Uh, still suffering from a cold. So let's go ahead and move into the lecture. So here's what we're gonna cover. We're gonna focus on quality. And of course, you know, quality is one of those challenges that, you know, back in the 70s, this is when quality really took off. You know, when um, Japanese manufacturers were looking at creating better products, okay? And that, um, that methodology got brought back into manufacturing in the United States. And of course, when we talk about software, well, we need quality software as well. Now, that may sound like an oxymoron to you, quality software, given that, you know, one of the great things about being a software manufacturer is we get to put out betas and we get to have them tested because there's not a huge impact, if you will, on us not producing a quality product. Now, if we did that when manufacturing a car and we put out a beta, people could get hurt, right? Now, the fact is, Today, quality, especially as security, becomes more of a focus. Quality becomes more of a focus to make sure our code is good, it can't be hacked, etc., that we're producing better products right out of the gate. So, so we'll look at a lot of these topics we're going to look at. We're going to focus on software management. However, these all play into any production of any product or service. So even a service, we can have quality and we'll look at like a help desk and what that means to have quality within a help desk procedure. So, so go ahead and pause this, look at these learning outcomes and we'll move forward. So <coughs> Henry Ford is quoted as saying, you know, quality means doing it right when no one is looking. Okay, so, you know, quality, the idea of quality has been around for a while, you know, inherent or distinguishing characteristic, a property, something that makes quality. So if you think about the brands you use, how many brands do you use that are price versus quality? Meaning a lot of times quality products will cost more. Okay, so maybe there's things that, that you purchase, clothes or, or electronics that you purchase because of the quality of the product. That's one of the, your key buying choices, right? So, you know, fit for use, conformance to requirements. Is it going to meet the requirements that we need? So when we talk about project management and quality, we want to make sure that not only are the outcomes, you know, or the project deliverables delivered, but they're delivered with quality, meaning they're going to continue, they're gonna perform reliably, they're gonna meet the requirements that the project had. So PM Box says the, the process of activities of performing organization that determine quality policies, objectives, and responsibilities so that the project will satisfy the needs for which it was undertaken. So again, <laughs> we're talking about quality, quality of the people involved, quality of the plans, quality of the outcomes or the deliverables. Um, and then of course, quality of the end product. You know, is it gonna, like it says here, satisfy the needs? Now, is it gonna satisfy or exceed the needs? Because those are two very different things. One costs way more than the other. But again, if we're trying to exceed the needs, we're probably getting out of scope, okay? So when we talk about quality management, I would encourage you to pause and read through this. You know, quality management is a cycle. It continues around, you know, we plan it, we assure it, we control it, you know, and then we make continuous improvements. So we look to continue to improve quality. So if we're able to take the defect rate down by 5%, we don't just suddenly stop at a defect rate on a product being manufactured at 5% if we still have a defect rate, okay? We want to take that defect rate to zero. Now that may not be possible depending on the manufacturing process, right? But we need to have it close. And of course, depending on the product, we need higher quality. See, this is where things like in aviation manufacturing, where the FAA comes in to say, okay, we're not going to allow you to create you know, a sub-quality product that's gonna fall out of the sky. 
you know, so there's way more quality. Now, the fact is you talk to aviation, you know, manufacturers and they'll say, whoa, we have to meet these quality, you know, standards that are just ridiculous, if you will, in certain cases. So um, <laughs> anyway, that's just an example, you know, so define quality standards. What are those going to be? How are we going to measure those standards? Then we get down to audit. So, you know, what is a consistent process in auditing those standards? How are we going to create metrics to know what they are? If they fall out of scope, if they remain in scope, whatever the case may be, we've then once we have those metrics, we collect the data to test against those metrics. Okay. And we continue to collect the data. So a quality program means going back in and continuously looking. Now, when it pertains to software, you know, this can be tough, but it, it may start with just simple code. What is the quality of our code? Is our code being produced with standards? Is our code being produced um, with good notation and documentation that remember, you know, the majority of code, 80% of coding is done on existing code. So, you know, is there things in place that if we go to make improvements after we deliver the product, that people are going to know what our code does, what this class does, what this method does, what these attributes are, that kind of stuff. And so quality starts from the get-go. That's the point that I want to make here. Now, when we talk about you know, focuses as it pertains to deliverables within a project, you know, quality within the business case, the project plan, the IT solution. So you've heard me say a lot about making sure that we have a quality plan, meaning, you know, plan, 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 then execute. Notice I didn't say plan, execute, execute, execute. I said plan, 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 execute, execute, or plan, 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 execute, sorry. The point is, the more we plan, the better our execution is going to be. When we talk about managing quality and processes, we talk about managing scope, managing risk, you know, managing requirements, managing the design and the implementation, all from a focus on quality. So if you notice here, if we're talking about a product, you know, and the amount of rework, okay, by defining requirements, design, develop, test, and implement, you know, it's this equality line that the more we do this, right, the less we're going to have this. So if, you know, if we're just here, okay, we're not going to, we, you know, we're going to see rework. And, and what we tend to see is the less we do of this, the more we rework we would have on a product. So as we do quality design, development, testing, implementing, and then improving out here, we start dropping the rework rate. And this is the same with code, folks. You know, the better we test our code, the better we design our code, the better we produce consistent code, the better off we are. Okay. So here are the key players, if you will, within quality philosophies. Okay. So first of all, craftsmanship, deep knowledge of craft, high standards, attention to detail, work done using best materials available. So if we think about this, this has been around well before the, the concept of quality. You know, great craftsmen that produce great products and services that lasted for a long time, okay? So as we get into talking about TQM or total quality management, the gurus with that were, you know, Edward Deming. So this is Mr. Deming here. Um, my first introduction into quality at Gelled Wen, which is a window and door manufacturing plant. Um, you know, we started implementing Deming's principles in quality and quality assurance. Um, guy by the name of Ken Austin. Yeah, Ken Austin was our first quality person there. He was the one that introduced this idea of creating metrics, of figuring out what the defect rates were, figuring out the quality of the raw materials coming in and that how those affected the quality of the products that we developed. Okay, so adding to that, the quality trilogy was Joseph Duran and then Philip Crosby, so who created the top-down approach, you know, manager's responsibility to set the quality example for others to follow. Okay, so the idea that if we wanted a quality organization or an organization that focused on quality, quality had to be a focus at the top, not bottom up, right? 
but a focus from the top down. So everything was done with quality. You know, processes were stopped and quality was implemented. So finally, F Frederick Tra uh, Taylor um, brought scientific management, thus quality, you know, into the business world. So, you know, arbitrary rules of thumb. So workers produce so much each day, no more, no less. So if you remember some of the studies that were done around this, like the Hawthorne studies, you know, what they found was that a worker produced the same amount, but when there was a focus simply on the worker, what was the worker doing? You know, setting, you know, they changed everything. They changed the temperature in the room, the lighting in the room, all these things in the room as they did this study. And yet quality kept increasing and manuf and production kept increasing and they didn't understand why till what they realized was the people doing the study were paying attention to the people doing the work. They were paying attention to the people. They were paying attention to the time and the product and the quality got better. And that was the key is pay attention to your assets. Okay. So realize that we're not just talking about quality with the, in the product, we're talking about quality within the people producing our product or service. So um, as we talk about CMMI, so capability, maturity model, integration. So it you know developed at the Software Engineering Institute. This is when we really started to see the implementation of quality models within software development, okay? Um, Humphreys, uh, Miter Corporation and Watts Humphrey developed a, a framework to access and evaluate the capability of software process and their maturity. So called the capability maturity model. We're going to take a look at that here real quick. So concepts behind the model were process, process capability, process performance and process maturity. Okay. Now what I encourage you to do is pause this slide and read through what these things were. What was a process, activities, methods, practices, capability, expected results. What was it that we expected to get and realize were we expecting capabilities above the capability, if you will, of the processes. Okay. So, you know, were we expecting performance that wasn't going to be able to be delivered with the input resources we have? For example, if I have a new database administrator versus a database administrator with five years worth of experience, I have a better capability within the database administrator with the five years experience. They're going to perform better, right? And they're going to create a more reliable product synthetically. So this is a great place to stop right here. So we'll stop this first video and I'll see you at part two. Take care.